Welcome back to my channel. Or welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I am Aubrey Love. This is my channel. I do reaction videos Monday through Thursday and try to do my own little original content on Friday. So if you subscribe, you can check all that out and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post. Today we're going to be checking out I'm Not a Good Cook, but I'm trying. And I can feel it a lot because I'm not a good cook, but I'll be trying to eat healthy and not eat out. So I try to cook all the time. I'm getting better though. So let's see what this talking about. I always have a hard time starting these videos. My computer does not be on the quickie. In the world? Do you own like three pots and pans and a wooden spoon but don't know how to use them? Are yes. you old enough to not be afraid of turning on the stove but you still are for some reason? Yep. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, we gotta figure something out. See, no one tells you this, but when you say, okay, I guess I'm an adult now, there's like a terms and conditions block of text hiding in your birthday cake. Mm -hmm. Huh. I, I look, go, let me go back real quick. Let me go back. Let me see if I can get to pause on the part where it, where, it's, where the clock, uh, where the cake has what it says in there. Had pay bills, rent, um, it was like car insurance or something like. That's a that? weird feeling. Kind of tastes like taxes. And when those terms and conditions catch up to you, they freaking hurt. And as it turns out, you cannot live off of Chipotle. I mean, you can, but is this really the life you want to live? Chipotle Luigi, if you know what's good for you, don't come right in here. So people. one night I decided I'd had enough DoorDash. It was high time I learned how to cook. Yeehaw! God. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that my inspiration for cooking tends to spike during the wee hours of the night. And you'll also know I'm not perfect in the kitchen. So without further ado, here are some of my trials and tribulations surrounding cooking. Soup time, soup time, gonna get a pot for some soup crimes. Soup really time, like her soup time, veggies in my hand looking mighty fine. Soup time, soup time, gonna peel the potato. Oh. Oh no. Whoops. Number one, be safe. If you are in the kitchen, you will be working with sharp objects. And if you enjoy having all the fingers you were born with, you ought to learn how to properly use sharp objects. The sharp object I used was a peeler and I didn't have the guard turned correctly. And that's how I ended up like this. So oh, don't no. be like me, be safe. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I was, cutting the, um, I was cutting the pineapple one time and pineapples are hard to cut. I had the knife and I just went doop, right on my hand. Boom, so she's not lying. Find you some. No, figure out what you're supposed to be doing first. But you end up like me or her and cut yourself. Don't do that. Time. Injury time. Time to account for my. And then you don't want to cook no more after you get hurt. Crimes. It's fine. I was fine. It was gross. I will not show a picture. But uh, to give you an idea, here's a PG rendition I sent to my mom. Anyway, here's how to be safe in the kitchen. First, make sure your knife is sharp. This might sound counterintuitive, but dull knives cause a lot more problems. Cause if you're chopping stuff, but the knife isn't going through it, you're gonna end up applying too much pressure to a knife and it could slip and you could get hurt. See, watch. Thankfully, I'm a cartoon character. So with the magic of animation, I can grow my hand back, mm -hmm. but you can't do that in real life, okay? First so just put the hand number two, on. learn how to hold a knife. When chopping stuff, the best practice is hold the knife at the base of the blade with one hand and with the other hand, curl your fingers in like a claw, like a cat. Yes. Yeah. I feel you. Cause you like all those fingers, right? And you want them all to stay on your hand, right? Right. right. And number three, put the sharps away, safe and clean. Believe me, I love a good dishwasher, but to quote what my grandmother told my mother, you're a good dishwasher too. Plus dishwasher detergent isn't so great for knives. It can dull the blade. And you remember what I said about your fingers. <laughs> I'll link some stuff in the All description right, for you guys time. to check out. All right, I've got a Band-Aid. I know how to hold a knife now. So let's actually try cooking. Just drop the, the first time like I that. tried cooking was back in college and I had some banging, albeit simple dishes. Chicken with Alfredo sauce and broccoli, chicken fajitas, spaghetti, as well as spaghetti. my matzo ball soup. But I'll get into that That's later. Deep within my highlight reel of wonderful dishes also lives a dozen horrible ones. There was one year I couldn't go home for the holidays, so a couple friends and I met up for a potluck, and we each cooked and brought something. And I was going to make, drum roll please, green bean casserole. Oh, that and sounds nasty. We're gonna put green beans in a casserole. 
don't even like green beans. And I know what you're thinking. Ew, green beans, a casserole, <laughs> yucky, wacky. No, thank you. But, but hear me out. Growing up in the South, man, green bean casserole is the bomb.com. It is the it's bee's not. knees. If you can make it right. Okay. The recipes I've Who's followed that? always include green beans, cream of mushroom soup, and fried onions on top. But the seasoning is very important. And let me make clear, I didn't ruin it because I under-seasoned. Hmm. That's a lot of pepper. Hmm. All right. One-fourth tablespoon. I knew it! So, yeah. It was really peppery. And when I took a test bite, it was not safe for human consumption. And when my friends came over, I warned them. I told them I messed up the pepper proportions and they should not eat this. But they were my friends and they're yeah, so friends, kind and supportive. So they were like, oh, come good. on, it can't be that bad. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that's a lot of pepper, man. Even though I messed up my contribution, it was still a great time because we were all together. And everyone else brought really good food, so that helped. And that's what I love about cooking. Even if it turns out to be garbage, it's still the reason we meet up in the first place. And even- The thing about cooking, though, the best part about it is, if you mess up one time, or the bad part about it, if you mess up one time, people are gonna be like, oh no, you can't cook. You can never cook. Oh no, don't eat. You know he made that. But if you cook it good one time, like, oh yeah, they got a chef. He to go to culinary school. Oh, get so and so to make it. So it's like you only got one time. Like the first time you cook for somebody, you got one time to be on this part of the spectrum or this part of the spectrum. And you know, now make it a good one. Just pick something simple to do. It's your first time cooking for somebody, for real, for real. And to this day, there's a lot I try to make, like tacos and chicken and even milk tea. And those things need polishing. But enough negativity. I think it's time I share with you guys a family meal that I grew up loving and making. Matzo ball soup. Listen. That good. Listen. Imagine if like a noodle was a sponge. Matzo balls are awesome because they soak up all the broth and all the flavor and all the seasoning. And it's so warm and soft and homey. My friends really liked it when I made it back in college, so I hope you guys like it too. Here's how to make matzo ball soup. All you really need is the matzo ball soup kit, which is pretty cheap, and you can find it in the international food aisle. Besides that, you can add literally anything you want. It's just like that scene in Ratatouille. You are Remy, and you can sniff things, and you can throw it in the pot. You know why? It's, it's, it's a soup! It's, as long as it tastes good, you're life. in the clear. Any Ratatouille is such a, um controversial topic. You got the rat in the kitchen cooking up with the nine shelf with the rat in his hat. And it's not actually a clean rat, not a house rat. It's like an outside rat that be in your walls and stuff. That's a, that's, that's a, like, whoever came with that topic. Ingredient, no. any flavor, any oh, spice. No, Papa John, wait, no. But that's what makes making soup so fun. So let's get crazy in the kitchen. I like chopping up some onions, some celery, some carrots, and some potatoes. But you can add whatever you like. <gasps> Peppa, <laughs> what are you doing in my soup? If you're feeling less Remy the rat and more Linguini the human, don't worry. It already comes with a little seasoning packet that gets the job done. But listen, the best part about matzo ball soup is making the matzo balls. Step one, eggs and oil. Step two, mix that mix in. Step three, chill out. Just hard, be man. calm. Add the soup mix to the water. Taste the seasoning. Feel the seasoning. Become the seasoning. And then you make the balls, you make the balls, you make the balls! Golf balls, golf ball size. Don't get crazy, don't get cocky. I know it's ha 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 funny because ha ha big matzo balls, but listen, you're making a big mistake, a mistake even bigger than your big matzo balls. They won't f***ing cook. So don't make the balls too big. Think of the children, Bro, please. Her, I'm begging you, just, just rein it in. You're amazing. And then you put the balls in the water and they float. Whee! Let it simmer for 20 minutes and then wham bam Christmas ham, you got a homey little bowl of matzo ball soup. Do illy. Pat yourself on the back, unwind, and enjoy. I'm gonna have to try this, man. You know I like to cook. 
It's delicious. And yes, it's a lot like chicken noodle soup. And yes, it may remind you of something to eat when you don't feel good. But that's just the thing. I know I'm not a very good cook, but I want to be. And I enjoy trying. So whenever I don't feel so good about cooking, and I feel stupid for even trying, I go back to the basics with matzo ball soup. Because it feels good to make things you actually like and enjoy making. And this is where I really feel like Remy the Ratatouille, the rat of all my dreams. Making something and making it with love always has a way of putting everything into perspective for you and for everyone you share it with. Remember, anyone can cook. So with that, that thank so you for much. watching my videos. Double, triple check how much pepper you add to your seasoning. And if you like this one, let me know by hitting like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. And as always, Definitely gonna hit like that. The animated fest has such great energy, man. Such a great video. Um, do y'all eat matzo ball soup? I never heard of that, but I'm definitely gonna go to the international aisle and try to make that now. So that'll probably be one of my videos coming up soon. Um, I love little videos. If y'all can send me other stuff to react to, man, I'll react to it. So, yeah, until next time, man.